Hi, I'm Kathy Driscoll. And I'm Sarah. And we are from the Nature Foundation at Winterbreen. We're going to talk to you today about discovering the Native Americans of Virginia through archaeology. We know that there were ancient people because of archaeology as far back as 12,000 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you may be familiar with the role of an archaeologist who excavates or digs up artifacts. Um, the role of an archaeologist is they study um, human history through looking at these artifacts that they unearth. And an artifact, for example, can be like an arrow, such as this arrowhead here. And because of them finding these artifacts, we were able to we, they were able to piece together a timeline, which is really, really fascinating to think about how long ago these people lived and what they used as raw materials to survive. So, how long ago are we talking? Well, to start the timeline, um, there was first the Paleo-Indian era, and this occurred about 12,000 to 10,000 years ago, which is pretty long ago. Mm -hmm. um, and these were the earliest human inhabitants in North America. Um, there are some theories that they crossed a land bridge um, through the Bering Straits in Siberia. Um, archaeologists divided sub-periods into three different periods. Um, and there were also, um, this era was based on the stone tools that they found. And um, a lot of these tools were used for hunting. They hunted bison and mammoth. And uh, they were nomadic hun hunters throughout this area. So, when we talk about the next step, it was the Archaic period, which is a long time frame of the Native Americans in perfecting these lithic materials, these stone-like materials. So we're talking 10 to 3,000 years ago. So it's called the Archaic period. And the early Archaic was about 10,000 years ago to mm -hmm. about 8,500. Yeah. So their, their tools were still pretty primitive. They um, <clears throat> utilized these tools to um, hunt other, um, you know, hunt for food and then also warring as well. Right. So, um, what kind of tools did we have in the early archaic? Well, we first had chipped stone axes, which you can see here. And these were used for chopping up things and looking like this. Um, and then we also had scrapers. So, here is the hide of an animal, so they would use a scraper to take off the meat of the hide. They might use these later, they might dry the hides and use those as well in addition to the meat. Um, we also have um, spearheads with side notched points. Here's an example, and here's another. You can see there's little notches on the sides of the spears. And so those are very representative of the early archaic era. And then later, it started to get warmer. So we're talking more about the middle archaic period where a lot of the plant species that we would find down at the lower levels started to creep up the, the mountains. So trees that you would expect to be down um, at the lowlands where the Native Americans were utilizing the rivers, they kind of followed that because those plants would provide food sources for them, such as nuts and talking chestnuts and oaks and things. So their um, material that they used to um, make food um, changed. So their, their technology started to progress as they progressed up the mountain. For example, you guys recognize this, a mortar and a pestle, and that helps grind up things that we like to use at the kitchen. Well, the ladies, or the, the, the women, Native Americans, would use these lithic rock-like materials as a bowl, and here's your pestle, and they would grind up the acorn to make things like flour. Right. And also, weren't there like, um, oh, e, the, one of my favorite rocks is the soapstone yes. that they utilized as well for things like cooking and um, because it could hold um, heat, residual heat, for a long period of time. What else? The axe. Right, we also have the axe. Yeah, so the axe, you talked about the early axe um, head was chipped. This one is actually a little bit more rounded. So their, their technology, again, is continuing to get better as we are coming closer to um, the 
later period of archaic. Right. right. So things continue to change into the late archaic period, which occurred about 4,500 to 3,000 years ago. And so during this time, um, the climate also became more dry, and there was also um, it was a lot warmer than it was originally. And so the plants continued to adapt to drier climates. Um, so you saw more predominantly hickory and chestnut um, forest. And so families continued to live at high elevation. Um, and this is where the harvest was plentiful um, as it was warmer temperatures became more predominant, uh, there became better harvests at higher elevations. And the hunting as well. Right. So we had things like deer and turkeys. Turkeys, um, with deer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking more yeah. of the gaming that we yeah. think of today. Yeah, very And good. so therefore, um, their um, technology again became better. So instead of using um, the more primitive type of um, uh, projectile points, they had more things like bows and arrows and things. So what was the civilization like then? Well, we talked about how they used soapstone in the middle archaic. So also in the late archaic, they would use soapstone. And they would use this in trading. You can make bowls out of this. So that was very common in trading and um, also used in feasting rituals. And there are also new, new spear points for them. So you can see um, in the archaic period, they also became a lot thinner and sharper than in the middle archaic um, period. Excellent! Now, let's talk about more modern times. After the archaic period, there was another period known as the woodland period, which was about 3,000 to 1,000 years ago. So you see here in the United States, that there were pretty much three different regions that they referred to. The Monacans were known as the Eastern Woodland um, Native Americans. And this was a time when they really utilized the natural resources for the everyday uses. How did they use these resources? Well, they used them to build their homes along the rivers, and they had um, burial um, systems set up at the time. So they would bury their dead pretty much where they fell. Right, so bones of the deceased were later removed from these burial sites and placed in mounds at um, ceremonial times and they were often grouped together um, instead of having individual graves. Um, the mounds were marked with ceremonial stones and these could stand, these mounds could reach heights of 15 or sometimes 20 feet. Well that is amazing. Yeah. It was awesome. So what about the different tribes here that we have? Right, so we're going to talk about um, the Virginia tribes on this map. Um, so we have, the, in addition to the Monacans, there were um, three other main linguistic groups here in Virginia. Um, first we have the Iroquoian language group, which you can see in southwest Virginia, and the green here, um, where it's labeled Cherokee, and um, this is the Cherokee and Iroquoian tribe. And then we also have the Algonquian group, which is in the yellow. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah. um, where it says the Powhatan chieftain. Um, and this is known as the Tidewater region, and it's composed of over 30 tribes in this Tidewater area. And then lastly, the Monacans fell under the Siouan language. So three major languages during this time. Monacans, if you see, it included a good stretch of um, Virginia um, and included other tr um, tribal areas of the Tutolo um, and the Saponi. But they were actually called the Monacan um, Nation, wasn't it? Right, they were a confederacy of different groups. So they kind of ended up banding all together based on the commonality of their languages. Right, so each linguistic group also had its own traditions and customs. Excellent. So let's talk about some of those traditions. The women were actually um, held in high esteem and they had very important roles um, in, with the tribes and they also had to take care of a lot of the daily tasks. Men were basically the hunters 
and the women were pretty much the gatherers. In fact, um, they were in charge of the cooking and the cleaning, and the men, when they went hunting, they would use every part of the animal. So we know um, by the hides, we, we talked about earlier, they would use that for clothing. They would use what we call sinew um, for, this is actually like the tendon from the deer's back of their ankles. So they would use the sinew to wrap um, their um, spit their arrows or their projectile points to their spears or their bow and arrow by this time. And so everything from an animal part was used. Also, the women made pottery. So we mentioned that they lived down in the, um, by the rivers, so pottery was made from, from things like mud. And we know this because these are the types of the artifacts that our archaeologists have found. And so the women would also make textiles, just baskets. Um, so here we have one made out of birch bark. Um, so this would be used to help carry things and put them in them like a pouch. And then they would also make use of animal products like this turtle shell could be used to hold things in like a bowl. And we also um, know that they used gourds and gourds could be used for scooping or storing things in them. And so they would make use of natural products in the resources around them. And not only that, but the, I mentioned the men were doing a lot of the hunting. Their tasks from the, the women were separate, but together they would, um, they would plow the fields and harvest. And we talk about things like the, the three sisters, known as the corn the and beans. the beans. <laughs> and the, Watch. Watch. <laughs> Very good. So corn. The husks could be used to help start fires. So um, a fire starter at that time was still pretty primitive, but it's really intriguing. They had a fire board and a fire, um, well they call this a bow drill and a hand bow. And um, they would, this is a handhold to hold it down and they would basically just wrap it and twist it and then go back and forth, back and forth until they got their tinder started to make their fire. Yeah, so we know the Monacans were very well equipped to live in the region and they understood their land and practiced um, sustainable practices in their agriculture. Um, they also We'll talk about um, they traveled on warrior paths um, along the ridges of the Blue Ridge and also had established trade routes along the Blue Ridge. So the trade routes on the Blue Ridge, this is going to be a really very important part for you guys because we're going to have you actually trace a trade route. Exactly. That's mine, actually. <laughs> so we're going to have that hand up for you. We'll have you make sure you look at that. Mm -hmm. You have a handout for you, and we'll explain how this works when we're done. So let's talk about wintergreen then. Yeah. So, so what do we know about wintergreen? Well, wintergreen, which we're standing at right now, is actually an archaeolog archaeological site. Um, an archaeological site is a specific place where people once lived, they worshipped, and um, in other words, it's a use of space by humans, and evidence shows here that at Wintergreen, the earliest population of humans could have been about 10,000 to 8,500 years ago. So that would be during the Archaic period, as we discussed. Hence, everything you see behind us is from the woodland to the Archaic to the woodland period, and then um, all of the sites that we have um, have been excavated, because that's what archaeologists do, to find evidence of these past um, civilizations. Almost half of these archaeological sites indicate that there were large families living in these areas, and there were also um, groups of people migrating through these areas for hunting reasons and for harvesting in the forests um, seasonally. So we know there was um, a difference in population possibly between the summer and the fall here. So people were basically moving around. Right, they definitely were. And so at this juncture we're talking a lot about that trading. So they would trade with the other tribes. When, when I said this at the very end here, which we're at the very end now, um, we are going to have a copy of this for you guys. 
um, to be able to print out and you will see, you'll recognize a lot of these places. So this blue line that you see on the Virginia map here was called the Warrior Path. And that literally is the Blue Ridge. Think about that. As a warrior, they could literally be on top of the mountain and look down and see their enemies. So that's why that was named the Warrior Path. You'll see other paths that are their trading routes. So we are going to ask you guys to color each route with a colored pencil um, something different. And you may notice a little dot right here that says three ridges. That's where Wintergreen is. So it literally shows all of the important places that these guys were trading with other tribes. So we hope you enjoyed discovering the Native Americans of Virginia. We have a very lengthy history of human inhabitation here, so it's very important to learn about our history of the Blue Ridge as well as the history of the Native Americans that lived here.